Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. So today is another video on the topic of revision. I've been doing a number of videos on the topic of revision lately because honestly, I've just been revising a lot lately. So I've done several videos on revision over the past few months. I did one on every draft of my novel and what the revision process looked like. I did one on a bunch of revision tips and I have a series of two videos on questions to ask yourself when revising, one for developmental edits and one for line edits. Today's video, I wanted to talk about a general framework for revision and the five key things to look for when revising your book and I'm calling these the five C's of revision because they all start with the letter C which really makes me feel very impressed with myself. Pretty much every edit that you will make will tie back to one of these things. These are the five main principles of revising a book. I mean you could say the five main principles of good writing. I think when you're making edits on your book and figuring out how to revise your book these are kind of the five key key values that at least I have. Number one is consistency. It's extremely normal for our voice to shift as we write a book, but no matter how fast you write your book, it's very normal for the voice to change because you will become more acquainted with the character, more acquainted with the world, and so naturally things are going to change. And along that details are going to change, the story will become more fully fleshed out. You'll realize little details that need to be tweaked or even large details that need to be tweaked. Um, in order to uh, make the plot unfold the best way possible. As a result, one of the keys in revision is consistency. It's very likely you have continuity issues. I mean, I can't imagine anyone writing a book with zero continuity issues. That sounds impossible. Maybe, maybe someone's done it. But even if it's just a tiny little thing that can't be planned for. Oh, like in this scene, I said that the lamp was this color and then I was describing the room 200 pages later again and I mentioned the lamp was a different color and I, I described the lamp differently. Pay particular attention to your first act because this is where all of the general building blocks were established but also where you were most likely to have changed things later on because this was in your earliest sketch of the piece. Did you introduce stylistic elements that you later dropped? Is the character consistent with how you developed them later on? And are all the details that you've introduced consistent with how they're later described and developed? This is a very just technical aspect of writing in many ways. It's not really a creative thing. It doesn't really come down to like your creative vision. It's just, are all of the pieces consistent? Both stylistically and logistically. The second principle, maybe the most important, is clarity. In my opinion, the vast majority of edits will come back to clarity. Quite simply, does this make sense? And does it convey to the reader the way I want it to convey? This includes both making sure that character motives and plot developments happen and develop for clear reasons, but also that the line level images and sentences are clear. Clarity issues are very hard to spot. I will just, I will just level with you right now. I think it's the reason people struggle with it so much is it's very hard to spot them in your own work. If you wrote it, you think it makes sense. And you have so much background knowledge on the story that it can be very, very difficult to read the story from the perspective of someone with none of this background knowledge. Really, I haven't come up with like a clear way to say how to spot clarity issues, but just literally doing a clarity read where that is the only thing you focus on and you just really are honest with yourself. Does this make sense? And cut or change anything that doesn't feel super clear is the way that I started getting better at it. I think most edits come back to clarity. Most of the time, the issues in your book aren't this isn't present, it's this is present, readers aren't getting it. A lot of plot holes, readers will be like, this is a plot hole, and you'll be like, no, there's an answer to that. But you can't stop there. That's what I think, and I used to do this, and sometimes newer writers who aren't used to getting feedback will get a little too defensive, and they'll stop at the defense and not ask, why does the person have this issue? So if someone is like, here's a plot hole, they kind of go, no, there's an answer to this. It's explained. I know the answer, so this is an irrelevant criticism. Okay, but the person still interpreted this way. Why? Maybe because the answer isn't clear. It's there, but it's not clear. Recently, I gave a story to uh, one of my critique partners to read. It mentioned that a character who's not present in the story was many years ago, a lead in a school production of Seussical. So there's a line that says that the main character watches the musical four times until she knows all this girl's lines. And my friend was like, how would she find a recording of the musical? It's like a elementary school production of Seussical. What I had meant was she watches just like a random Broadway production of Seussical, not the one that the girl was actually in. I never would have noticed that that wasn't clear. In my mind, that makes sense because I know what I wrote. Once I saw it from an outside perspective of someone reading the story for the first time, I was like, oh, of course, 
that does sound like what I was saying was that she watched the girl's own production of Suzical. These are the kind of things that it's very hard to notice on your own. People will comment on. The more you start to learn your tendencies and the places where you can be unclear, the better you can fix these problems. Whenever you get feedback, I think it's always good to ask, okay, can I fix this with clarity? Before I start overhauling the structure of my book, can this be fixed with a couple sentences of clarity? Because a lot of time it can be and that revelation made editing a lot less overwhelming for me when I realized that most of the time when I get feedback I can fix the problem with a few small adjustments to clarity because most of the time the problem the person has comes back to what I was trying to convey not being clear. So before you make any large edit just ask can I fix this with a couple sentences of clarity? A lot of the time you can. <laughs> the next key principle of editing is causality. This is your story's cause and effect relationship. You want to make sure there is a clear relationship between all events. You know, it's the string of dominoes. You knock it over at the beginning and each one knocks over the subsequent domino. Causality is so important. Without any causality, you just have a string of events. And I do have a video where I talk about the different types of causal connections. They don't necessarily have to be external. They can be emotional. Sometimes they can even be symbolic or metaphoric. Your story does need some sense of causality, even in a very mild plot where there isn't much plot. There needs to be some sense of causality emotionally that is making this a narrative and not just isolated events that don't connect to each other. But on the other hand, if you have a very plotty novel where there is a really clear plot, then it's really important that you have clean, consistent causality that connects the events. This is as simple and straightforward as does each event cause the next event, but that doesn't mean that actually creating a clear causal chain is that simple. It will potentially be one of the most difficult parts of editing your book. At least it is for me because I'm very bad at causality. Now it's something that I try to pay more attention to on the first draft so that I don't end up having to revise the causality for months. This could also even come back to things like extraneous beats. Maybe you have a beat that is repeated multiple times or you have multiple scenes that serve the purpose that could be served by one scene. This is a causal relationship that is present, but it's being drawn out too much. You could compress that one link in the causal chain into just a single beat. If you are struggling with causality, I would recommend writing it out. So literally make a list of scenes and write how every single scene causes the next scene, whether that's through external or internal means. Sometimes the best way to edit your book is literally just to write it out. Um, that will really make it clear what you have in the story that isn't clear and what isn't there yet and needs to be integrated. The next key principle of revision is cohesion. This is making sure that all the ideas and choices that you make for your piece contribute to a consistent end goal. This applies in a lot of different contexts. You know, do you have any scenes that are totally inconsistent? Just don't make sense with the cohesive tone or mood or atmosphere that you're trying to create. Do you have any ideas that just do not jive with the general thematic thesis or point that you're trying to make? Are there any subplots that just don't really contribute to the overall plot development? How does every piece in your story work together? If there's a piece that just doesn't work with the other pieces, it's in co it's not cohesive. You either want to find a way to bring it into the fold or potentially just edit it out. I had a lot of these little threads in my novels, little things that I thought would go somewhere but just ended up not going anywhere and they just had to be edited out. I think it's natural to have these little threads that at some point you think are going to be important but just ultimately don't really go anywhere. Ideally with your final piece, every choice that you've made and every element that you've introduced, whether that be a plot element, a character, a character detail, um, or a stylistic or formative choice, will all contribute to the overall cohesiveness of the whole, right? The plot, the characters, and the form will all work together to contribute to the theme. Your stylistic choices will reflect your character development, right? And your character development will maybe reflect your symbolism. It'll all tie back together. If there's anything that just doesn't tie in, it's not there for a cohesive purpose, then it's something to address in revision. Cohesion edits often also come back to economy, right? Like economy and compressing your story. Maybe that could be a six one compression, but I think it just fits in with cohesion. You know, compression of a story, making sure that you're telling the best story you can in the fewest scenes and fewest words possible means cutting anything that just doesn't contribute. Extraneous scenes, beats, details, characters all come back to issues with cohesion. These things just don't need to be there. So they bog down the work and you can cut them. And the final key building block of revising is credibility. 
This is where you make it look like you knew what you were doing all along. <laughs> this includes adding layers of depth, potentially even doing some supplementary research, and overall adding credibility to your voice as the author. So the reader doesn't question that you know what you're talking about. They feel like they're in the hands of a credible author who has the credibility to tell the story and knew what they were talking about. It's fine if you didn't know what you were talking about at the beginning. A lot of the time we don't really know the story that we want to tell when we first get into it, and we need to write it ourselves to figure out what the story we wanted to tell was. But then you kind of need to go back and imbue the story with that credibility now that you know what you're doing. In my novel Honey Vinegar, for me this came to the background detail of the setting. It was my first time writing a historical project and it was a whole novel, so it was a lot to take on. And I actually had to do a lot of research after the fact. After I finished the book, there were points where I could look at my world and be like, okay, this is just not credible. Like, I don't believe that this is a credible amount of historical detail. You know, I had to do a lot of tweaking to my characters, the background detail of my story, like what the town looked like and what jobs people had and my character's living situation and her family's jobs and stuff like that. That took research after the fact to make it feel credible. In the novel that I'm currently just finished revising, um, the places where I felt there was a lack of credibility was in some aspects of my character psychology. You know, it's a character that I've been writing for many, many years that I think I didn't do a lot of the exploratory work on the page. I'd done it in another book years ago. And so now reading over the, the draft, I was like, wait, there are a lot of aspects of her psychology that aren't credible. Like, why does she feel this way? Where do these complexes that she has come from? So I had to go back and add credibility to her psychology. It'll be different in every book. Aspects of your book that just feel a bit shaky, they're not convincing. That's where you want to go back and add credibility. So those are the five main core principles of revision. And I think any type of edit, whether that's plot, character, theme, or form or style, will tie back to these things. My question for today is, if you're currently revising something, what is the biggest problem that you're currently facing in revision? Every project will introduce like new things. Every time I write something, I have to revise it. I'm like, so here's a problem that I didn't even know was possible for a piece of writing to have, but I guess I'm just, I'm inventing new problems. I'm at that stage where I'm creating new issues that I didn't know could exist. Um, the main issue in the book that I was just revising is just like certain missing links in the causal chain where there were just like points where I didn't feel it was credible that my main character was making decisions that she made and th that credibility came back to a missing beat in the causal chain where it was like I was missing an event that would spur her to make the choices that she made and I just had a few points like that in the book and it was very very hard to figure out how to fix that. So that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.